What's up WordPress people, subscription people. For this video, what I'd like to do is go through a spreadsheet worksheet that we have to help subscription businesses in particular set a goal for their subscription business and how they'd like to grow the business over three years. And then you can analyze that and see a forecast. And as I said before, like I'm a big proponent of spreadsheets for organizing your thoughts and positive visualization through spreadsheets, going through this exercise, which is something that you should do about every year and then check in on every quarter. That positive visualization, like writing down in a spreadsheet in three years, I'm going to make more money. I'm going to have more subscribers. I'm going to have a bigger business. Also, I'm going to have more expenses. I'm going to have more salaries to pay. Something about putting that into a spreadsheet makes it real, right? You're telling the universe, I want this to happen. And maybe there's some kind of mystical energy out there that helps set things in motion to make it happen. Maybe you start talking about it to your friends and colleagues and they all start pushing it in the right direction. And also maybe your brain changes a little bit where you're on the lookout for, oh, what are the things I have to do to get from here to there? What are the levers that I can pull? So I'm actually looking at the third tab in this spreadsheet. And at the end of the video, I will share a URL where you can get this spreadsheet and a bunch of other templates that we have for small businesses. So look forward to that. So right now, so this is a, basically a, a very simple three-year forecast of a theoretical subscription business that I set up and saying, hey, maybe in 2021, I had 400 subscribers and I was making $38,000 in recurring revenue. Salaries, maybe I have a helper. I'm not paying myself, or maybe that is what you pay yourself or proponents of paying yourself. But when the, you're making this small amount of money in the beginning, it maybe isn't feasible. You just, all the profits become the money that you have left over. But maybe you have help that you have to pay $10,000 to. Maybe your expenses are low. You, they're low or we go into expenses in some other sheets, but the per unit expense is zero. If it's a digital course, you pay for a website, you pay for hosting. You pay for technical help. You pay for software like Paid Memberships Pro, potentially. There are expenses, but the per unit expense is the marginal cost of a new subscriber is zero. Like the same website can handle 400 subscribers or thousands. And then, hey, you made $28,000 in profit this year with a 74% margin. And you have the goal to make over $100,000 in profit. And... In the scenario I set up, I set some goals. So that's the goal that I set. And this spreadsheet then throws it in to this format. So you can visualize like, what does that really mean? If I grow from $38,000 this year to, if we look at this column, to $194,000 in revenue, you know, almost 2000 customers in year three, what does that actually look like? So let me dive into the first tab that sets this up and we'll go through the exercise and hopefully it'll make more sense. So if you go to the first tab, we call this baseline. So this is your starting point. So if you have a subscription business already, where are you at? How many, it says units sold here, but how many subscribers do you have? And what are they paying you? This example is annual, is based on annual. You would have to adjust this for if you had monthly subscribers. You could just estimate what the annual cost, if, what's the lifetime value of a customer, something that we'll get into later in the open office hours. But so yeah, so for instance, this is, a subscription that costs $97 per year. Like I said, there's no customer acquisition cost or unit cost per new subscriber. And maybe I estimate or I know that my churn is 50%. So half the people who sign up this year are not going to renew next year. And depending on your business or who you serve, that may or may not be like a good percentage. You can get, it can be dangerous comparing yourself to others. You can look for industry standards for this. But for example, we, our business has about 50% churn, maybe it's like 40% the first year for paid memberships pro. And we'd hear from other people like, that's really high. My churn is like 5%. And there's two things about that churn that's not really comparable sometimes. They might be doing monthly churn. And I can't do the math in my head now. We could do it quickly, but 5% per month monthly churn might be more than 50% per year annual churn. So make sure that you're comparing annual to annual, monthly to monthly. People might sound like a high number. And then the other thing is like a lot of our customers are small businesses and we know that the small business failure rate is fairly high. So a lot of our customers who don't pay us in year two is my business went out of business. 
I didn't watch enough videos on the Stranger Studios YouTube channel to learn what I needed to know to be successful in my business. <laughs> now I can't afford to pay for software anymore. Anyway, I dove into that too much, but that's annual churn. And then how much revenue did you make? This is, so the blue fields you want to change, these other fields are calculated. So based on 400 units sold at $97, you would have made $38,800. Salaries is like your expenses for other things. And then here we have other expenses. So there's the expense per unit. And then here's where you would put maybe, actually, let's update this. You would put, what are your hosting expenses? Are you paying maybe $300 per year hosting? And I can even do this as a formula, like $300. This might make it easier to change in the future. So like I have to pay for hosting. Maybe I pay for paid memberships pro and I pay for some other software, like 500 bucks. And maybe here I, I, I send, I don't know, it's just, uh, did file my taxes, you know, a couple hundred bucks and I don't know some other business mentorship that I do, other things that add up to like 500 bucks. So imagine I have this much expenses that comes off your profit. That changes your profit margin. This is another one that you might be comparing to other businesses. It's like some businesses have really thin margins. They're making one, like Costco only just makes 3% margins. They just buy things and sell them to you for very minimally. The price is raised only a little bit to cover their expenses. Whereas a lot of online businesses have really high margins. So what you shoot for will depend on your industry and all kinds of things. Okay. So let me see here. Revenue per unit, cost per unit, profit per unit. So we also show like the overall profit. And if you had customer acquisition costs, which we'll get into in a little bit, that these numbers down here might be different. So let's set a goal for ourselves. I set this up. That's my baseline. Let's update the goal. Let's say, hey, I want 2,000 subscribers. I'm sorry. And maybe the price is going to stay the same for now. Cause that's all I understand. I can't imagine raising my price yet. Maybe the unit costs or the customer acquisition costs will be $10 per customer. Cause I might already have a plan. Cause my buddy told me that Facebook ads are a good way to get new subscribers in my niche. And I'm estimating that it's going to cost about $10 per subscriber to get those units. If that's just a theoretical situation, or maybe you're like, I, I'm going to send everyone an envelope with a a handwritten letter and that whole service costs like $10 per person. So if there's some kind of cost that you're estimating, sometimes these costs and expenses are higher in the goal because you're spending money to make money. So I'm trying to show that in the example here. Hey, my churn is still 50%. You could set that the same, or maybe you have a goal to reduce churn and that's part of how you're going to make the money that you want. Let's see here. And then just calculate the revenue. Maybe my salaries I'm expecting to go up because I'm going to employ more people. And my expenses here are potentially going to go up. They were almost 2000 and now they're 20,000. So I'm expecting those to go up as well. But what I'm getting to $150,000 profit, which is my goal for three years and I'll have higher margins. So you plug that stuff in and you look at the forecast and the, this third sheet gets updated. So the don't want to change any of these values in particular, the red ones get calculated here. And all these white ones get calculated from the other tabs. So if you did want to tweak around things, you could just go to this tab and change things directly, but it's better to change on those two tabs in the sheet. But here it shows you your baseline and your goal. And then what it does is it plots into these years. And if you're looking at this video, like in 2022, 2023, you might want to update the years on these. The baseline is going to show up here. And then this is calculating a three-year goal. So it's going to push out three years. And what's interesting is the sheet's going to calculate the churn for you. So it's and it's splitting recurring units and new units as separate things. So remember the churn is 50%. So I started with 400 subscribers, but only 200 of them are left over the following year. Only a hundred of them are left over the year after that. Only 50 of them are left over the year after that. And then a similar thing happens like you're, this is showing me though, if that churn is accurate, this is how many new subscribers I need to make to hit my 2000 target. I'm actually confused why this says 1950 instead of 2000. I think it's some kind of math with the churn from the previous year, but it's pretty close there. So that's the first insight that setting this baseline and this goal is giving you is if you look at it, see how it's splitting out the recurring units and the new units. These are the new subscribe. These are the subscri subscribers you have to keep. These are the new subscribers. So my one year, I have a three-year goal to make $150,000. 
this spreadsheet is telling me that my one year goal to get there is to have 730 new subscribers next year. And you could do the math and say, okay, if that's 733 divided by 12, that's 61 subscribers per month. I need 61 members per month or 61 divided by 30 is like about two per day. So you, th this gives you your goal of, like, hey, I need to get two subscribers every day in order to build up to enough to stay on pace to hit my goal. It's also showing you the revenue goals and also how to expect your salaries to increase and your expenses to increase over time. So this kind of, it does like a kind of dumb estimate of, okay, you said you want to get here in three years. I'm just going to divide it by thirds and, and make sure you get there. And yeah, so I'll just go over the notes again. These values are pulled in from other tabs. Excuse me, avoid changing the red cells. This forecast is assuming three years to hit your goal, but you could program a spreadsheet similar ways if you were thinking on different times. So, you know, it, it, this is assuming like you have legacy pricing where existing users are charged the baseline price. And if your goal included increasing the price, that would be reflected in new customers. And the other thing you can do is you can fill it if you have multiple years data. And this is like one of the first things I would do is even just this part, you don't have to build this weird. This is a pretty simple worksheet, but even this, you don't have to build. If you have a spreadsheet that has these columns and you just manually plot these things in here and you say, Hey, this year I had this many subscribers. The next year I had that many. So you can calculate your growth rate. This is typically how my subscription is growing. Is it growing fast enough or too slow or too fast? Then you can, what do I have to do to, to make it faster? And then those are the questions. And, and like I said, what are the levers you can pull? So imagine that. You know, I said my goal was to make six figures. And if I hit this target, I'll get there. But let's say once I do this, I go, wow, 733 subscribers. That's a lot of subscribers considering for the past three years, I've built up to 400. And for whatever reason in my niche, I don't think I can get that. So I'm like, hey, I actually don't think I can get that many subscribers. Like when I see it laid out this way, like 2000 subscribers made sense in my head. But when I actually see it laid out and I think about it, it doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel obtainable. So I'm going to go back and update my goal and say, you know what? I think I can only get to like a thousand subscribers realistically. There's only so many people in my niche or I don't even know where I'm going to find these folks. If you update that number and you go back to the forecast, these numbers will update and you'll see that, hey, my profit in year three is only $67,000. That's not six figures. I need six figures to keep this business going. And sustain my lifestyle that I want. So what you realize is this is kind of the value of the worksheet is massaging the data. You say, okay, I'm not making enough. I don't realistically, I feel like I can make 400 subscribers next year and maybe 700 the following year, but I don't think I can make more than that. So to hit my goal, another lever I can pull is the unit price. What if I change my pricing? What if I increase my pricing to 197? Let me see what that looks like. I go to the forecast and now I'm seeing, oh, that's even better. Wait, I'm at 162. It was like 158 before when I was, I have half as, this makes sense when you play it out, right? Because I doubled the price. I have half as many subscribers, but I doubled the price. So I get to the same profit that I want. Maybe if your unit cost is even higher, increasing your price is a better lever to pull than just trying to go after more subscribers. And th this matters for every business, but this is the value of doing this in the spreadsheet form is, you can think through these things, but there's like a real visceral feeling to doing this of like, oh, wow. If I raise the price, that's what I get. Or maybe you raise the price and you feel like that feels unrealistic. That's a doubling of prices. People are going to be bad at me. And you're like, I realistically think I can only get 150. But maybe I was wrong on the unit cost. I can get that down. And maybe some of these expenses aren't real, but you can massage these numbers until you get to the profit that you're looking for. So this is the value of using spreadsheets like this, worksheets like this, what I call positive visualization through spreadsheets. You know, you plug in the numbers, you set your goal, and it tells you broken down into different pieces, different levers of how you're going to get there. And th this is a good exercise. And after you do this, the good thing to do then is three months later, for sure, six months later. And I have the years. <laughs> it's 2022 now. So really it should, if this is this year, but say, Hey, in 2023, six months later, like, how did I do? Did I get 
400 or 700 users? Is my, are my expenses in line with what I thought they would be? Is it, do I need to pay two people? I thought I'd only need one. My expenses are more. And you can update the sheet to reflect reality as time goes on or keep a copy of the sheet every year and figure out how you have to pivot your company in the middle of the year. Okay. I was actually, you know, I learned that I can or can't get subscribers as easily. I learned that I can or can't increase the price so easily. I learned that I can or can't decrease my churn so easily. So based on what you learn over time, you're like, okay, the right way to get to my goal, my revenue goal, my subscriber goal is to maybe change a little bit. So if you check in on these worksheets every three months, that's what you can do. So thanks for that. Helpful. Oh, I, what I said is you can grab this worksheet and others like it, including ones I'm going to show on the rest of these open office hours by going to strangerstudios.com slash budget dash forecast dash WordPress. And you'll see a sign up for our mailing list. And as soon as you sign up for our mailing list through this form, you'll get a link to these documents on Google Docs. And so that's a good thing to do to grab these. And you can stay tuned to the newsletter to get more information about what Kim and I are doing in business.